everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video i'm so excited to show you guys not only this cute little spiderweb french design but also the nail bed color because i use the new delicate peach from light elegance it's um one of their two new structure shades and i wanted to show you guys some of the sets i've used these colors with over the months because if you weren't aware i did work with light elegance to be able to bring these shades to fruition to the forefront i wanted to um work with them to make sure there is a wider variety of nail bed colors to fit a wider variety of clients and skin tones and complexions and undertones so delicate peach is of course it has a peachy undertone um but it's more pinky brown but you can see i've used it on a variety of skin tones from deeper to dark darker clients to um, more fair skin as you can see um this is delicate peach and they have it in jimmy jill and their builder so i've used i've used them both of course um jimmy jill is great for their structure overlay manis fills things like that and the builder is of course great for building longer nails and etc so these are all delicate peach so you can just kind of see how they look in different lighting different skin tones and of course our set that we're doing today and then i also want to show you guys cashmere cashmere is more of a pinky tone um but it has a more brown tone to it, it has brown to it but it's definitely more pinky especially when you put it next to the delicate peach so this is cashmere I want to again show you guys on a variety of skin tones, different sets, and in different contexts, um, so you can kind of see it, um, especially in the variety of lighting. I I've done some sets, I've done videos on some sets, just the design only, without you guys knowing I've used these shades. So I'm so happy to be able to show you the, what finally the nail bed colors, and just so you can kind of see what they look like, so you can get an idea. So. You know, if you're able to get light elegance yourself, you can, you know, go ahead and do that. And if you, you know, have a nail tech and you want these colors, you feel like they would look good on you or you prefer them, you know, you can say, hey, nail tech, check out these new light elegance colors. Look at this. This was fun. That cowboy set and this Halloween set as well. And this set I recently just cute little ombre, but all using the new cashmere pink. So you guys definitely check them out. Cashmere is in their extreme consistency, which does self level. So let's get into the video. So my client came in with no nails, as you can see, I'm just kind of showing you her status. Um, this is actually one of my client's daughters. She wanted a little Halloween set. So I did her nails for her. Um, she, she's in high school. It makes it sound like she's eight, but you know, when you get to be this age, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> so I'm going in with the itty bitty bit, which of course is a diamond bit. And I'm using this bit both in forward and in reverse. I am right-handed. So reverse means that we're going to use it from the left side of the nail to the right side of the nail. And forward means we're going to do the opposite. If you're left-handed, reverse would be the normal direction for you and forward would be reverse so that's simple isn't it <laughs> um not confusing <laughs> oh so i'm going in you want to keep this bit flush to the natural nail and the natural nail does curve so it's not going to always literally look like it's parallel to the ground but like i said flush to the surface of the natural nail so i am going in and using the shaper bit which is a cross cut style diamond bit and i applied some tips and i'm going in and blending my tips my client she wanted some kind of more kind of tapered square not super coffin nails all of these are coffin shaped tips these are just some tips i got off amazon just make sure your tips are quality abs plastic of course um so i'm going in like i said and blending the tips with this bit and this is this is preferred to me for me because um you know you don't have to go in with a file and i if i can keep a buffer or a file away from you know the cuticle area sidewalls my client's live skin 
I definitely prefer to because I personally don't like it. It can be uncomfortable and even if it doesn't cut you, you know what I'm saying? So I, that's why you see me in my videos time and time again. Again, I will use a cross cut style bit, this, this shaper bit for a lot of things. Um, diamond bits are great because you can use them on the surface of the nail, of course with proper pressure and speed. Um, but as you can see, I have a little air bubble where the glue didn't adhere. So I'm just removing that because, you know, at the end of the day, our tips are just kind of, they're, they're not for strength or anything. They're just to hold the structure in place. They're like forms we're not removing, you know what I mean? So we don't want anything they have going on to mess with our structure of our nail at all. So let's get them nice and flush, clean, not affecting our sidewalls and all that. So I went and applied Light Elegance's Air Bond and then I let that um, air dry <laughs> for about 15 seconds and then I applied tack. And as you can see, I'm applying tack over the natural nail, the entirety of the natural nail and the actual tip. It will help prep and prime the tip as well because there's a little bit acetone in there. So it helps make sure that what you build will adhere to the surface entirely. So that is Delicate Peach, as you can see. Absolutely love it. And I just want to show you guys me building with this for a little bit. <laughs> so I start all the nails with a slip layer, if you're not familiar. Um, a slip layer is a layer that we apply um, for our bigger bead, our next bead. We leave it wet. I didn't cure anything. We leave it wet and it makes this bigger bead, um, for lack of a better term, kind of melt into that slip layer. It tells it where to go and where not to go. Um, the gel, I move it, you'll see me, and this is sped up, so I, it may not even look like it. It's very much sped up. So I um, am taking the gel, I'm really manipulating it to get it down the nail because um, with the builder shade, it doesn't self-level. Um, but like I said, you can kind of manipulate it and with my air quotes, kind of heat it up a little bit and it'll, you know, kind of help it loosen up a little so it can kind of work a little better for you. Look how, and I'm gonna say it, look how beautiful. I just love this color. Um, I love how great it looks on her skin tone, but as you've seen in the beginning of the video, like I said, I put all those different clips together so you can see both of the new shades on a variety of skin tones. So you can see if it, you know, how it looks if you're, you know, if you have a more medium skin tone. She has a little more, um, a little bit more olive to her. I don't know if you can tell. And just how it looks against her skin tone, more of like a medium, slightly olive, more yellow um, undertone that she has in her complexion, as you can see. So just I just think this color plays very, very nice with her undertones and just her complexion in general. It doesn't like stick out to be like this bright pink. It really allows, you know, to do its job because we want our nudes to be you know essentially kind of that we want it to be nothing more because when you know if you are nude you have nothing <laughs> on it's you know and we want to kind of bring the spirit of, I'll offer the spirit of that to people so you know you don't have to only have you know this which can be beautiful. It's all about preference also because I could have simply used ideal pink on her, cosmetic pink on her, and it would have looked beautiful as well, but it would have looked more so in its name. Like it would have looked like a more so intentional pinker nail bed color. And like I said, that is fine. But if you want something that's not going to, um, you know, kind of battle your final look, like we don't want, we want this to be about the French, you know? So if you want something more nude and neutral, we gotta have more variety of shades. And, um, you know, it's not gonna be, we need, we need, literally would need every single possible shade on earth to match um, such a wide variety of skin tones, of course. But, um, you know, by 
white elegance is a willingness to expand their line. Um, and like I said, I was able to, you know, come in and help with this process and test these colors out and really see what would work with a variety of skin tones, what was missing um, from, from the colors that they already had, from colors in general that other lines, you know, what's already out there. Just kind of see what can be a little different. There's nothing new under the sun, of course, you guys, but in the light elegance universe, um, there is, and it's the new delicate peach and cashmere shades, um, which have made my day to day as a nail tech, just when I'm not recording, just doing nails. Um, it makes my job easier because I used to mix and layer shades to get more custom colors, similar tones to cashmere or delicate peach. And now I don't have to do that. I can, you know, just straight from the jar to the nail, use a product I love. Um, Light Elegance, I thoroughly enjoy just because, you know, there's, there's a chemist on staff. There's more than one, but there definitely is a chemist on staff, which if you didn't know the owner, um, Jim, he's not him and his wife, um, but Jim is a chemist. And so these products are chemically sound and made here. So you know what you're getting, you know, it's quality, you know, um, it's not going to have the nasty yuckies and everything like that. So it was twofold beautiful for me to be able to, as a nail tech, find these colors in a brand that is high quality luxury and I know cares about the safety of myself and my clients. So like I said, as a nail tech, if I had any no parts of this, I would be so excited for this order in already for this because I'm like, yes, finally, <laughs> finally, my elegance. Yes. <laughs> so definitely, like I said, check them out. Um, if you can, my elegance on their website is for um, nail pros and nail students. So take that into consideration. Like I said, if you just here, if you watch my content as, you know, just somebody who likes nails to get ideas, tell your nail tech. Say, hey, nail tech. <laughs> There's these new shades. I think they're really cute. I think you should get you some. You know, let them know. <laughs> so you can see just been chatting away while I've been building the nails, but it's, we're just dancing around the product to get it more leveled. I always say just in terms of gel um, versus acrylic, builder gel is so much, I don't, I don't just say it, it just is what it is. <laughs> um, builder gel is much softer and easier to file. So I, um, I do one-on-ones with people and I call it an acrylic bias. There's a bias of wanting to perfect gel a little too much. I mean, you can, especially if you get a self-leveling gel, gravity will self-level and get it real perfect for you. But with the gel in general, I said it's so much softer and easier to file. Of course, acrylic is hard to file, so you want to lay it perfect because the last thing you want to do is sit here with your hand file or e-file trying to remedy <laughs> acrylic so you have a, a pressure to really lay it perfectly and I mean like I said there's nothing wrong with it we're not trying to lay you know this builder gel just any way we're still trying to you know make it look nice confined and how it's supposed to be but the inconsistencies that we have um you know any type of texture you see me kind of moving around the product and if it leaves any type of um line dent lump or anything like that we can easily like in a matter of like j just quickly and easily <laughs> just file that out and get it together and then boom you're good and i said just because it is softer and easier to file but please don't confuse that with it being any less durable or strong um gel is more flexible than acrylic so um you know you kind of want these um, you know, you want to have some flexibility in the nails because you do use them. You do, 
you know, you're not supposed to use them as tools, but they're at the end of your fingertips and your hands are doing stuff. So it's inevitable that they're going to get involved in something. <laughs> so you would want a little more flexibility. So it would have a little bend into it before it would break. And we, we're talking on a very small level. These are not like flexi nails or anything like that. But, you know, on a very, very, you know, zoom in up close and watch, you know, an acrylic nail get hit versus a gel nail get hit, you're going to... Um, acrylic is going to be more susceptible to cracking overall than gel just because it's more rigid and less flexible that's also why you get better longevity and wear overall with gel as well just because it's a little more flexible and our natural nails are flexible so it can kind of flex with them so you don't get that opposition and for people whose hands are in you know water chemicals moisture and heat often those people's nails can again be more susceptible to you know, being flexible because of the moisture and heat and things like that. So you want something that'll have a little flex to it. Again, these are not overtly flexible. You can't see that. We're talking on a, you know, kind of micro level. <laughs> so I went in with the shaper bit and um, tapered in my cuticle area and the nail, as you can see, is finished. I don't generally buff. Um, you can go in with a um, matte top coat at this point if the ridges in the nail are affecting your work in any way. If you're trying to do like the thinnest of lines, I don't really feel like they were getting in the way with what I was doing here. So I just love the surface as it was. Also to clean around the cuticle area a little bit, I use the preppy bit. And I prefer to use the preppy bit in that context, just, you know, in case I touched, um, you know, the live skin a little bit, or maybe, you know, it kind of fell into the cuticle area. Maybe if the client's hand was at, you know, an angle, we'll just put the blame on the client. <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, so of course we don't want to make a habit out of that, but if you have any little oopsie daisies, you can use the preppy bit. I use it at about 9,000 RPMs so and you can go in and, um, separate that product from the live skin. So we don't have to worry about any lifting and also just any um, uncomfortability from it touching and also um, any like textural differences once it grows out. We want it nice and flush for the grow out. So um, as you can see, I'm going in and I'm using the Selena Ride in Stripey Brush and then I'm also using Black Tie Buttercream and I'm going in creating these Frenches. Now, the nails that the um that my client showed me they were a higher French which means more the nail was black and I kind of lowered it a little bit and made it a more elongated French I thought it would make it a little more elegant in a way you know so I kind of talk because she wanted them just straight up square with like more of an old school French if you will like a higher French you know what I mean <laughs> and so I kind of like oh, let's taper do you mind if I taper in the nail a little bit so they're not just completely square and so we went there and then I was like is this French okay with you what if we went a little bit deeper with the French is that okay <laughs> um so and I think I you know they're her, her nails as long as she was okay with it you know of course if she wanted what she wanted that's what she would have gotten <laughs> I would have done it but she was okay and I, I like kind of you know that modification ever so slightly just to make them a little more you know I think that it, that shape is a little more complimentary to her fingers but still comes across with what she was doing she didn't want to like I said overtly like coffin tapered nail and that's not I don't think that's what this portrays so I'm just cleaning up this French with the French as you see I'm I keep on lining it up to the finger next to it and that's because I want to I want to make sure that they're you know they're sisters and not cousins that they feel related they feel like they belong together so I want to make sure that we're getting the actual taper in from the French similar as similar as possible and I, you know I can only visually compare these because when they're two different nails if you're comparing the ones um on the same hand if you're trying to measure the pointer to the middle to the ring you know 
they're different width of nails. So proportionally it can be a little bit different, especially because we can have different lengths of nail beds on different fingers. So we're trying to get them as close. Like I said, we're trying to get them to look like sisters. They might not be identical twins, you know, but maybe something close like that, like Irish twins, something like that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I like to put them next to each other now. Let me tell you something. There's an air bubble right there on that right side of the nail over the line in which I'm drawing. And I just had to live with it. Um, if you do, of course, we want to make sure, especially if we're doing a set like this where the nail bed is going to, you know, what we build the structure, whether it's this color, another color clear, if it's going to show you probably don't want to have the air bubbles and you want to minimize that. So try to be cautious of that, cautious and conscious of that. So, you know, you don't have an air bubble sitting on the very line in which you want to draw your French. Yeah. So um, you, you could go in and remedy that. Um, you know, you can kind of go in and drill it out a little more and dust it out real good. I'd apply some tack and go in and essentially patch it, fill it up, and you could probably get it together. But I didn't really feel like it was doing a lot of harm in the grand scheme of it all. <laughs> so again, just going in with the French and for me, just as standard, I kind of start Frenches from the same point. I'm mindful of, you know, if there's some differences in the nail bed length, but from the left and side, the right parts of the side walls where the free edge starts, I start a little above that, more so towards the cuticle area. And then I kind of match that up and then bring it down. And then the um, depth of the French, you know, I kind of modify. So I tried to draw a heart, you know, just a hollow heart and that was not working. I wiped that off. I was not about that to entertain that for long <laughs> um and this heart wasn't better so i took the stylus the blink stylus the pointy needle one and i went in and i drew i drew i put two dots down and i extended them out to make a heart and um then we went ahead and cared and then i'm gonna go in with the black as you can see and also again the blink stylus and cover up the center and try to make it look like it was a hollow heart from the beginning it kind of worked, so kudos to that. So let's put a black heart down below. Our emoji today in this video will be a black heart uh, because that's what I have after knowing and realizing that I cannot draw a heart on nails. You know, some of the most seemingly simplistic things can be very daunting. Tell me also, tell me down below what is like your simple kryptonite. Like what is it, what is the thing that you think should be simple for you and you're like yeah no I can't because hearts really take me down they really do <laughs> when I when I was younger I used to braid hair and I could not braid like bigger <laughs> you would think I, I could you think it'd be easier and people would try even I love you like why, why can't you braid bigger it seems like it'd be less work it seemed like it'd be easier no no you need like a whole bunch of braids then I can do it <laughs> it's like five of them no dice two French braids no deal <laughs> so now I'm taking the again the Slilina right in stripey brush and I'm pulling out from that center point to make our you know I did not research the anatomy of a spider web so we're gonna make our long lines of our weft our spider Whip, whip. <laughs> and then we're going to go in with our little cross ones. And so all in all with the spider web design, it's fairly simplistic overall to kind of make it come across. You can, you know, draw it as clean or kind of, you know, distressed as you want. And I think it'll still come across and, and look good just because of the nature of what it is. Spider web, it's Halloween, you know. So I'm using the swirly brush to create um, the kind of cross little lines and those as you can see they're going to have a curve a curve outward well they curve inward towards the center so the lowest part of the curve 
it's towards the center of our design or where our lines convene. So we start off with lines. You're going to see further in the set, we're going to start off like a center point where they start from and then they're going to spread out in kind of a 360 degree situation. Um, that's generally how we're going to create spider webs that kind of look like spider webs. So I started off with the lines from the center point. Our center point is our heart and I extended them out in a variety of directions and the lines that I extended out are a variety of lengths just to give it some character. Then I cured that, I didn't show you, but I cured that. And then like I said, I'm going in with this kind of C shape where the lowest part of that arch or that C shape is faced in towards our center part. So you can see what's happening here. We have a visual representation and I was trying to give you a verbal one. <laughs> so after I do that, I like to kind of extend some of the pieces out further than the others, just like I said, just to add some pizzazz and make that point kind of sharper and refresh it. So the one with the heart in the center is like our feature nail and the rest are just gonna have some kind of partial spider webs coming from the corners along with like I said, a little couple lens flares. She showed me um, a picture of what she wanted and I didn't even, I, I, I didn't, I don't know where it came from. So apologies for that. <laughs> so again, same thing, like I said, with the center one, we're gonna start with a center point um, and kind of pull some lines towards that center where they're going out in different directions. And then we'll go in with our little arches. And then for the little lens flares, those are pretty simple. I take a dot with a, you take a pointer, I use the stylus and then pull them out in the four directions. So I'm just kind of going in between these different concepts and getting some lint here and there. So we're working through that as well. And I said, I'm using the swirly brush to go in and add those details. And it's not, and I didn't feel it needed to be, it's not the cleanest of lines necessarily. And I don't say that, you know, it's me, it's me guys. It's at the, of course I want the cleanest of lines, but I said with this, I didn't feel like it needed that perfection. I felt like it could do it just a slight disservice depending on the overall aesthetic of the nails. So I said, just going in with the swirly brush to create these little shapes. And um, so you can kind of see here how the variety of lengths really kind of plays into that look. So when we swing it over, we just have some, like I said, some lines are longer than others. And I think it just really adds to it overall. Um, with the Frenches and the lens flares, um, in general, anything that I have to make sure is straight or I need to draw uh, as a right-handed person towards the left side of the nail. If I need to pull my brush from right to left in both of those instances, I like to flip the hand um, palm up with the um, nails facing me. So that one, if you're in that position, you can pull your hand as a right-handed person from left to right with no problem now. And then also you gain a new perspective so you can see if that French or whatever you're doing is straight whatever you need to get kind of um, symmetrical or balance you can make sure and that's my biggest tip for Frenches overall flip the hand over and see it from that perspective because I, I almost guarantee you you um, if you're feeling funky about it while it's facing this way as we're seeing it on the camera if you flip the hand over you're gonna like I said be able to see it from a new perspective a new vantage point so you're gonna be able to see, oh yeah, this is kind of weird on this side. And you know, or this is like this. I don't know why my camera is shaking so much and I'm so sorry. I have only to think quite possibly that my client, she was shaking her knee at the table. Yeah, and this is sped up. So my, my apologies for that. Um, so like I said, we're gonna put for these lens flares a little dot and then we're gonna pull out in each direction. I tried to, for the sake of literally this video, to not flip the hand over. And I mean, I managed to do it, but it makes it hard because flip, pulling to the left, to the left, I have to position my hand real weird and it can make the line go at a slight angle just because I can't get it completely kind of at a 90 degree 
angle perpendicular perfectly perfect perpendicular to the nail that I need to so I recommend flipping it over if you need so those are our last elements and then I'm going to top coat with super shiny go ahead and top coat put that in the light of course I use my LE light uh, my lamp <laughs> and then cure that and then you can wipe off the tacky layer I didn't show that always you can use um, the LE cuticle oil I absolutely love it and I like to wipe my nails off. You can wipe it off with cleanser, acetone, or something like that, just so the oil doesn't make them, you know, not shiny. But I really appreciate you guys watching. Um, definitely check out the new structure shades from my elegance. Like I said, the new Delicate Peach and Jimmy Gel and Builder Gel, and also Cashmere and the Extreme Consistency. Again, go back to the beginning of the video if you want to kind of study the shades and see what you want. So I appreciate you guys for watching. Um, don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, check out the new colors and all the LE products. And I want to thank Light Elegance. Don't forget to leave that black heart emoji. You guys have a happy spooky season. Bye.